Hi everyone, I'm Phil Soria and welcome back to her channel, Pink, Pink Citrus. Citrus. On this channel, I will be showing you recipes that I've learned, tweaked and have come up with over the years. Today we are continuing our holiday segment and I will let Phil Soria let us know what we're making today. And thank you again, Judy, for having me on your channel again. Thank you for being here. Oh, it's wonderful. Very excited to share with everyone a treat that's actually gonna be good for the, any time of the year, really. But won't your guests be delighted to see on their table the tiramisu. Before getting started, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and share this video. I would greatly appreciate it. We will also be sharing the full recipe on our website, which will be in the description box below. And now Phil, let us know what we're gonna be using today. Absolutely, so for our tiramisu today, make sure you have your lady fingers. We're gonna have mascarpone cheese, and we have sugar, that's granulated sugar, egg yolks, espresso, hot water to mix with your espresso, more granulated sugar for your whipping cream or heavy cream. And in here we have a pre-made mixture of Grand Marnier and espresso. And what's that right there? Oh, let's not forget. This is corn syrup. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing we wanna do is actually want to whip up our whipping cream. We're going to reserve that in the fridge after we are done whipping it up. And what I'm gonna ask is if Judy, if you could prepare our hand mixer, and we're gonna sprinkle in our granulated sugar. Which one would you like? We're gonna use the whisk attachment. Okay. Set that to the side. Wonderful. All right, so we're gonna begin. There we go. Sometimes it likes to get a little messy. As it is a liquid. So what we're doing is we're incorporating air into the whipping cream or heavy cream. And, and as we incorporate air, it begins to actually develop a shape. And so ways that we know that this thing is ready to go is it will actually hold a peak. If I was to stop it right now, you notice it doesn't hold and nothing, nothing sticks on. So that's... Once we reach a firmness and we incorporate enough air, it will have, actually have a structure and it will actually hold a peak. Now there's three peaks, or three types of peaks that we will see. One is a soft peak, one is a medium peak, which is a peak that we are trying to achieve here, and there's a stiff peak. Now bear in mind that there is called a point of no return. You incorporate too much air, you get what is proverbially known as a breaking point because you basically break your whipping cream or you break your egg whites, whatever you're, you're working on that's incorporating air to develop those peaks. Once you hit that point of no return and you break it, that's it, baby. No return. No return. Yeah, start all over again, right? And we're gonna see as we begin to approach enough air molecules in the structure itself, we will actually see it begins to begin holding a shape. So it's beginning to slightly hold a shape. Now tiramisu is Italian for pick me up. So tira, which means pick, me, which means me. And then misu, um, me, Sue, so Sue is up. So pick me up. Nice little pick me up. Well, considering it has espresso, I think for good reason, right? We always need one of those that pick us up. <laughs> Absolutely. Now the interesting thing is that the tiramisu is one of the desserts that's just globally known. As a matter of fact, uh, it is known the, in 23 different languages, or it's inside the encyclopedia of 23 different languages, the word tiramisu, or tiramisu. Pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you can probably see that, Judy, it's beginning to hold some shape in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm starting to learn the differences between the peaks, which is something that you spoke about in the previous video, and it's really interesting. So, for us 
to stop it right now. You get to see, now it's not, now it's beginning to stick on there, right? But you see it's folding right over, so that means it's not quite ready yet. It's not even... Where a peak would you consider that? It's not really, I don't really consider that to be a peak okay. because... because it doesn't even stay up. Yeah, so... It's, it almost wants to be a soft peak, almost. Gotcha. I'm gonna kick up the speed. Now that this thing will swing all over the place, which does not have some shape in it. Look at that beauty. Mm. So you probably notice that it's beginning to hold a lot more shape. Okay. So that is about a medium. And I think I'm going to be okay with this right here. Yeah. So see how it's not pointed straight up, but it's kind of slightly folded to the side. Um, and so that kind of tells us that that's about a medium. Now soft would be more down like that. So there we go. So we are done with that. Remove this attachment and we're going to use our hand mixer later. We're going to go ahead and reserve this into our fridge. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to go on to our next step. And I'm actually going to be preparing our egg yolks with our sugar right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be whisking it together. Um, and I'm actually going to do that over a double boiler to heat up our mixture. And uh, once we're done with it, it's going to have a ribbony uh, consistency to it. So there's our egg yolks. There we go. And then introduce our sugar. If you want to drop our sugar in here. And I'm going to clean this off. And I'm going to use this whisk, this hand whisk, in order to kind of begin combining it together. And I'm actually going to be doing that over the stove. Th does this process matter um, as far as us doing this first or if we would have put it on the mixer first and then put it in there? Uh, so, I mean, you can begin mixing it in there, but ultimately you want to take it to the stove. So I'm kind of demonstrating what I'll be doing over, over the stove. So I'll be whisking it together like that. And you're going to notice that the, the consistency is going to change. Okay. And so I'll be right back. I'm going to put this over the do double boiler. And in the meanwhile, uh, why don't you go ahead and put the flat beater attachments to the hand mixer and begin to cream our mascarpone cheese. Perfect. done is I have brought our egg yolks and sugar to the temperature that's needed. I usually do what's called a finger test and I, until it's very, until it's bearable I can barely hold my finger in. That kind of indicates to me that the temperature is just right. Of course if you want to use a thermometer, typically about 110 degrees or so, uh, you don't want to cook your eggs as fast as you want to do. I'm going to use whisk attachment and incorporate some air into our egg mixture. Let's talk about it real quick. I'm gonna show this to you, the camera. So you will notice that the, the consistency has totally changed. And as I let it drip, it, look, it kind of holds a shape. So that's a, kind of a ribbony look to it. And we're gonna introduce this with our mascarpone cheese. Let's see, we were gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna switch to paddle mix and we're gonna introduce the mascarpone into this over here. So I'm swapping out for a paddle attachment. Lock this right back in. 
All right, folks. Now this within itself, by itself, it, it, will, it would taste yummy, very airy. So, and just toss some of this in here. Should I start on the espresso yet, or? Yeah, so I'll be, while I begin doing this, why don't you go ahead and begin on the espresso. It's okay. a very good call, Judy. Lock that in. Now you may have noticed I left our double boiler on in the back and the reason why is in case you have any struggles incorporating your mascarpone cheese with your with your egg yolks, uh, maybe there's a the temperature of the room or different little factors that may affect it. So I use heat to kind of bring it all, all together as well to expand the molecules. I did say that baking is a science. So. Okay, so I have my two ounces of water and then the espresso. And remind me why it's important to put our uh, corn syrup when this is hot. Yeah, so corn syrup, because uh, the type of sugar it is, we wanna make sure it properly dissolves 100% into, into, the, into the espresso. Okay. So another reason why your mascarpone cheese and your eggs and sugar may not combine together properly is because if you burn out the mascarpone cheese and it's still too cold, it's on a room temperature, it may not incorporate it properly. So make sure it's at room temperature. But don't worry, it's not the end of the world. Another way to overcome that problem if you begin to notice that the consistency is not right is to just bring it back to the double boiler and begin to mix it, right? Um, it may look separated, but it'll begin to come together as the molecules begin to expand and, and then comes, comes back together. How does this look for now? Want to know what it looks like? Looks like good enough for me to drink. I need some caffeine right now. <laughs> <laughs> Never understand, uh, underestimate power of caffeine. That's too much power. <laughs> yeah, this one though would be a little bit on the punchy side. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so it's looking pretty good. I'm feeling it and it's like our sugar's properly dissolved in there. Perfect. Um, so, so far it's looking creamy. If you'll take a look, Judith. And give me your professional assessment of how it looks so far. Oh, it looks great. Doesn't it look fantastic? Yes. Uh, yeah, once again, temperature matters, right? Temperature matters. Um, when you're combining ingredients, um, sometimes when things are too cold, they just won't combine uh, together. They won't incorporate properly. So we're just gonna give it a few more around, make sure, making sure it's properly incorporated. And then we're gonna be introducing a liquid. While we're doing that, why don't we go ahead and begin prepping our tray where we're gonna pour our mixture into. So what Judith's gonna do is she's gonna bring out our lady fingers and our Grand Marnier mixture and begin prepping the bottom of that, that pan, right? So it's gonna serve as the base of our tiramisu. It's gonna be lovely. And do not feel afraid to pour these guys in here. Right, and you can actually take an approach where you dip the bottom and then the top as well. So you take for a little swim. Uh, a little trick to the, the Grand Marnier mixture is to prep it ahead of time so it's cooled down because if it's too hot, it may get absorbed too quickly into your lady fingers and kind of um, uh, bring down the structure inside the lady fingers. This is looking fantastic over here on the side, and it looks like you're doing a great job over there, too. Thank you. You're welcome, Judy. Looking forward to making this more often. So this is looking pretty great. I'm just kind of poking around, making sure that everything is properly incorporated. The last thing you want is bits of cheese. It's still uh, not fully around. So, i gonna turn this around a few times. Now what I'm gonna do is while it's still moving, I'm gonna begin incorporating our espresso. 
Now it's very important that you watch this step very carefully because if you pour the, too much liquid into there, um, sometimes the consistencies are interesting. And if you begin to notice it begins to separate or anything like that, then you have to be careful because that means you're incorporating too much water molecules or liquid molecules into your mixture. And so I pour a little bit at a time. How does this look? Wow, that is fantastic. That's great. And so Judith, uh, I know that we have uh, prepared this pan together. If you want to tell the crowd here how we prepared our pan. Um, remind me about what this one is called again. Oh uh, yes, the cake collar. <laughs> there you go, cake collar. So we did do a layer of um, the sheet that is used for cakes which again, I'm not a, a pastry chef, I'm not a baker, so I don't, might not know all the names to these things, but we did put that below, and then that's when I, on top I put the lady fingers after soaking them, and then we have this collar to help keep our tiramisu together. Wonderful. And we're using, uh, again, what are these called? The, the type of pan, because they have this. Yeah, so now we're using today a springform pan, um, because uh, the round shape, but you can use a nine inch pan. Uh, there's also a pastry ring that you can purchase um, if you do this pretty often. Uh, pastry rings are good because they're used not just for tiramisu, but for different types of pastries as well. And yeah, this is looking fantastic, by the way. So, what that does. so one of the things to note is I like to make my espresso super punchy, right? So this is what's introducing that coffee flavor to the mixture. Do we need our whipping cream ready? Yes, actually we are almost ready for our whipping cream um, to introduce that into here. And I'm just washing everything. I wanna make sure nothing separates. Um, everything is homogenous. That looks perfect. It looks lovely, right? Yeah, I love it. All right, and that looks pretty good there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our whipping cream and we're gonna introduce it into our mixture. Which is back from the fridge. Amazing. See amazing service here. <laughs> All right, here we go. So in a previous video, we talked about folding techniques and that's exactly what we're gonna use to introduce our whipping cream is to fold it in there. So let's go ahead and set this to the side. And then we're gonna, we don't need our mixer anymore. So why don't you go ahead and hold that and let's move this out of our way. All right, so now here comes uh, the folding process. Set this to the side. And what we're gonna do is, the first one is always called the sacrifice, right? And the sacrifice. Sacrifice. The sacrifice, I know, right? <laughs> All hail, sacrifice to the tiramisu. No, but um, whenever you incorporate like whipping, um, just like this. I see why uh, it's a, called a, lift me a, up. Yeah, a, a meringue, anything like that. The first one is always called the sacrifice because that's used to loosen up what's already in there. And so you kind of just are loosening it up. So the air molecules begin to kind of, um, kind of separate it and uh, allow the other molecules to to be introduced and fluff it up because uh, as you're folding what you want to do is you're trying to get this thing to fluff up right you want to preserve the air molecules you don't want it to deflate that's very important inside of a mousse and what I'm doing is I'm scraping from the bottom right so I scrape and then I bring it on up which is kind of interesting because you're like literally folding. Yes, exactly. That's why it's called folding. Mm -hmm. and so literally, um, and then, so that's look good. that looks good enough. That's really nice. Yeah, I like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna introduce more whipping cream. It looks nice and mm -hmm. soft and creamy. That's gonna be so good. We love this. Okay. So introducing like another third of it, the golden rule of thirds for some reason, works just fine. Okay. So just folding on up, there we go. On up. Okay, shall we incorporate all ingredients? That is nice and fluffy. 
Mm-hmm. Go, folding, folding. What can happen if the whipping cream would have gone to that la that last point that we say there's no return? Yeah, so it, your your mousse is just not gonna look that good. Okay. <laughs> Make sure to keep that medium peak, right? Yeah, it, it, it does affect you know the flavor, the experience, just there. Um, Interesting. Yeah, and although the flavor may be there, but you know it's all, all about all the components working together. So there's a science in this. Oh, there truly for is. For sure. For sure. Would you like me to just get that for you? I think we're good, right there. Thank you. So I'm gonna finish folding the rest of it in. Extremely fluffy. As you can see, yeah, I think it's trying to escape from us out of the bowl. Okay, bring the ingredients up and over. Up and over. Until we see a uniform color just all across. Why do you have to do it by hand? Why couldn't you have just left it in the hand mixer? Sorry, the hand mixer in the stand mixer. It's a great question. And the reason why is the machine does not understand um, how sensitive this thing is. So um, when you do it by hand, it's to respect the the mousse. Gotcha. Yep. Again, there's a science to this. <laughs> Absolutely. The machine can all, all just, uh, just understands. Oh yeah, just mm -hmm. go for it, right? And turn, 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 and so on and so forth. Okay. That looks amazing. Yes. So it's looking pretty good. That's our Chelsea mousse here. It's all incorporated with air. Now we're just gonna begin pouring. So we're gonna pour in a layer. Okay. Making sure it goes out to the sides and the edges around. And should we always use a collar when making a tiramisu? Yeah, it's because you want it to um, be able to release nice and easy and maintain its shape. Because what we're going to do is we're going to pop this into the freezer. And once we do, the um, it'll actually hold its shape. It's pretty yummy. Okay. So I think what we can do now is just add a little bit more. And then we'll add in a, another layer of the lady, lady fingers. Absolutely. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Good stuff. Use the lady fingers to help level it out too. So go, let's go ahead and do another layer of lady fingers. great it's gonna be very delicious and don't be afraid to uh, break apart the lady fingers to fill in the gaps that is perfectly fine. I've learned this today. Yep, just enough, nothing goes to waste. Nope. Good deal. There we go. And time for the rest.
quite fluffy. So the other purpose for that collar is for the level of the tiramisu. And because of how fluffy it is, of course it passes the pan. Yes, indeed. Okay, so that's set. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna throw this into the freezer and let it freeze over. So obviously we can smooth that a little bit more, but uh, after that it goes to the freezer and then we'll do the final touches. For how long do you think we should keep it in the freezer? Um, it's definitely going to be a few hours. Sometimes you want to set it overnight. And so that way if everything is firm and ready to go for you. Okay, let's give it a few hours. Now that our tiramisu has had time to set, we are going to unpan it and we're going to do the finishing touches to it. So we're going to release it from the spring form that we have here, just like so. Set that to the side. And of course we set it on a cake board, which helped us out to remove it, just like so. Perfect. Yeah. And, and that, I guess, is another help for the collar, right? Absolutely. So we're going to remove the collar now. We're going to find where it's located at. There we go. So, once, so the good thing about cake collars is that if you wash them, you can reuse them. Good to know. All right. So next, let's go ahead and open up our baking powder. Oh, we're cooking uh, baking powder. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Cocoa it's, powder. It's, it's baking. <laughs> yes. So baking cocoa. There we go. Let's remove this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just begin to sprinkle, and we can begin dusting the the top with it. And that's uh, a little too much. It's okay. We will return it. And you'll notice that I set it on top of parchment. The reason why is if some of it um, falls off the edge, I can recuperate that cocoa powder. Nice. Yes. So, kind of dusting it just to make sure that it is set. Nice and covered. Nice little layer. On so top. you want to make sure that it's definitely covered all the way, that you don't see the, the cream? Oh, absolutely. And so you can actually, there's actually ways to do designs as well with those. And I'm just gonna return our cocoa powder here um, after we're done. So we're just gonna set that to the side for now. And then we can begin adding actually lady fingers to the sides. So, like so. And it should stick right on just like that. Nice. That was my concern. Like, how are you gonna get <laughs> How are you gonna stick it on there? Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, just do it side by side. So I think this is to make it very nice and fonte. Yes, yes, this indeed. Nice and fancy. Once again, just all you need is to do a ribbon and you're good to go. And there you have it, tiramisu. So this 
is our final product, our tiramisu. Thank you again, Phil, for coming and showing us how to make this beautiful pastry. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and share. And we will see you beautiful people on the next one.